Now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. WMAL. 8.07 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. Coming up at 8.35, we'll be joined by the one, the only, Larry Kudlow from CNBC. I am Brian Wilson, and he is Larry O'Connor. And joining us on the line is Ken Cuccinelli, of course, the Attorney General, the Commonwealth of Virginia, and gubernatorial candidate. And he has a brand new book called Last Line of Defense. And uh, Attorney General Cuccinelli, I do want to ask you about your book, but uh, really quickly, I need you to respond to the fact that Lieutenant Governor uh, Bill Bowling has now said, uh, you know, they say beware the Ides of March. Uh, you should beware March 14th, the day before the Ides of March. He has told reporters that he's planning a big announcement that day. A lot of people are thinking that he's going to announce an independent run for governor. Uh, first of all, I want your impression on that. And also, if he does do this, do you think that he should step down as lieutenant lieutenant governor because he ran and won as a Republican. And if he runs as an independent, clearly he's relinquishing the party. Uh, well, I, I think that he's just scheduled that for his decision date. He had, uh, no, no surprise there. He's got to wait until after the session to address that. Um, and, and I don't think he, he should do what he's going to do. Uh, lieutenant governor's main duties are during the session. He does some other things with the governor and economic development, but that's all that's all you know that's all a month in the future and and i think he's still thinking about all that today we're we're launching the last line of defense i've never had a book before and this is the first one i've ever done and and it's out today available all over the place amazon.com all those kinds of places all right. and, and we, we we're we talk about something i've talked to you guys about before and that is these fights of the federal government that we've been waging from the states and it isn't just virginia of course lots of states have been in on this and we walk through and talk about example after example of how this government's getting bigger and is becoming a serious threat to the liberty it was established to protect. Um, you know, I don't think that's terribly political. I think every American, whether they're conservative, liberal, vegetarian, libertarian, ought to ought to be concerned about that. So, what is the front line of that of that battle right now? Well, you know, it's these administrative agencies, and when we're looking at a president who's heading into his second term, this is traditionally when they feel most unrestrained. They don't have to worry in their minds about re-election. And as hard as this president and his administration has pushed over the line repeatedly, I mean, just in the last month, we beat them in the EPA case, a water case, where Fairfax County Board of Supervisors was our co-plaintiff. Uh, also last month, they lost the National Labor Relations Board ruling, where the president had brazenly uh, decided that the Senate wasn't in session, and so he could appoint three people to the National Labor Relations Board, and the court said, no, 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 the president doesn't get to decide when they're in session. It's one thing after another where they're stepping over the line, and we're pushing them back. And the founding fathers intended for states to be pushing them back when they overstepped these boundaries. And this book catalogs us doing that time and time again from the states. Ken Cuccinelli's book is called Last Line of Defense. It launches today, and you can grab it, as he said, at uh, bookstores as well as Amazon.com. And uh, Ken Cuccinelli, when you start speaking in these terms of the states being the last uh, line of defense against the federal government, you you talk about the Tenth Amendment, you talk about states' rights, you know what people on the left are going to do. They're going to start painting you. They're going to say you're just like Bull Connor, that you're uh, on the side of the people who are resisting civil rights and using states' rights as a, as a reason for or an excuse for promoting uh, uh, racial laws. Are you ready for that onslaught? They're going to start calling you a racist. They, they, uh, they would be historically radically wrong. And, and federalism, these, these are federalism battles. You know, most people set federalism aside when they left their civics class in 10th grade. The area you're talking about, and it's particularly important in Virginia, because Virginia, uh, Virginia's state government was oppressive to using the law to its black citizens. And so what happened? Well, the federal government pushed back on the states to protect the U.S. Constitution. That was a very different time and a very different battle. But the two levels of government pushed on one another to protect the Constitution in the case of the federal government. And they overcame the state's resistance to, to the abuses they were conducting on, on their own citizens. And now what we have is an administration on, on a very different set of issues that is overstepping the boundaries of the law. And this is a two-way street. The states are there to push back when the federal government oversteps its boundaries. 
James Madison wrote about this in the Federalist Papers. I mean, this was part of what the founders expected states to do. This was part of the role of states is to protect liberty this way. And you know what? This is mainstream. The Pew Research right. folks just came out with a survey the end of last month that for the first time ever showed that a majority of Americans believe the federal government is a threat to their personal rights and freedoms, their liberty. That is the only time in history that's registered as a majority. This theme that we're writing about in this book is the majority view now. And uh, I think we, our leadership has helped make it the majority view, and it is correct. It is accurate. It's worth being a, a concerned about how far our federal government right. is going, breaking the law and trampling our liberty. You talk about overstepping bounds, um, and uh, some people would suggest that perhaps you have overstepped your bounds when it came to offering or endorsing a transportation plan that was in variance with the plan offered by the governor. Uh, and then I, I understand it's sort of hung up right now because Senate Democrats are opposed to the plan. So what is going to emerge in all of this? Well, in, in Virginia, we've got 11 days left in the, in the General Assembly session. Um, the next two days, today and tomorrow, are going to be very, very important on the Senate side to see what survives on the transportation front. Um, I have continued to encourage my friends and colleagues there in the Capitol uh, to keep pushing for something constructive that is, uh, you know, that is not a wild-eyed and, and does more harm than good. Is that what but you think of the, of the governor's plan? Uh, uh, hold it, hold it. Are you suggesting... Well, regardless of what comes out, there's going to be more to do. Are you suggesting the governor's plan is wild-eyed? Oh, come on, Brian. I don't know what you're so saying. Quit, quit smoking that stuff. It's not legal yet. <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, you know, we, we immediately were supportive of the governor's effort this is a long process. I was in the General Assembly for eight years before I was Attorney General, and uh, and I know it's got a lot of iterations to go through, but it's crunch time now. And uh, I think it's going to be very important in the next two days what the Senate has to do and then people's perspective of what comes out of any conference committee, assuming that a bill survives the Senate. Because the first go-around, as you noted, well, you 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 drew attention to it. You didn't say it. No bill got out of the Senate. Yeah. But I did support an amendment to, to Senator Newman's bill that got the high water vote for, for Marks, high water vote for Marks. It was 18 votes out of 40 was the most votes that anything got in the first round. And, um, you know, hopefully we do better the next time and we get to 21. You need 21 votes in the Senate to pass something. And, uh, and I, and obviously I hope it's a good constructive a bill that that will start to move Virginia forward. I would say that in 26 years, we've only had one compromise get through, and that was in 2007. I voted for that compromise when I was in the state Senate, and then Governor Tim Kaine messed it up. He amended it and made it unconstitutional, and the Virginia Supreme Court found it unconstitutional the next year, 7 to 0. Yeah. Seven to zero. So we have been down this road before. We've actually succeeded through the General Assembly. Governor McDonald is not going to make anything that comes to him unconstitutional. Tim Kaine didn't care as much about that. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see, particularly in the next two days, what happens in the Virginia Senate. And then I think it's probably going to run to the end of next week with the conference committees, the middle to the end of next week and the conference committees to really see if anything constructive can come out of the session. But either way, I'm telling you, in, the, in this governor's race, either way, we have more behind this that we're going to campaign on specifically to advance transportation. So well, this discussion will not be done in February of 2013. Well, and we'll look forward to hearing from you as the campaign continues. Ken Cuccinelli, Attorney General of Virginia, thank you for joining us today. And your book, Last Line of Defense, is available for everyone at Amazon.com. Attorney General called you out, Brian Wilson, uh, for smoking the funny uh, stuff. Listen, is, that may be the problem is that I never have. Well, it's a good thing you're a Maryland resident, or yeah. you'd have a knock on the door from the Attorney General. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks for